So I just recently finished uh, Ian Banks's The Bridge. Um, I actually borrowed, the, borrowed this off the library, that's why I'm covering up the barcode, but yeah, uh, this was a very strange book, I have to say. Um, I was really, like, I thought it would be a quickish read because it's only 245 pages, but I mean, I forgot that it's like such a huge book, so, and even though the text is kind of big, it's kind of blocky, so it took me a few days, but it's a very strange book. Like, I mean, you're introduced to John Orr, who, who, uh, he like washed up on the shore of this bridge that, like, people live on. There's like many levels. The bridge is, is said to go on forever in either direction, and nobody knows, like, if it connects to land, even though it's rumored one way goes to the city and the other way goes to somewhere else and you're introduced to him he's telling this dream that he had which he actually made up which for the record I friggin love this imagery in this dream like it's so awesome I was like sucked right in when I was like he was retelling this dream it had to do with two carriages that were like um, sealed shut with like chain or a lock or something and they both came to a bridge and they couldn't pass each other even though they had to and they like kind of mirrored each other I don't know it was kind of neat but his doctor is like trying to help him get over his amnesia because he doesn't remember who he is um so then you just kind of follow along with him but then I kind of like got confused and lost when all of a sudden a new chapter begins with uh Alex and Andrea and their storyline is set in like reality like real world so I mean you kind of figure out what's going on at the end or near the end but I just didn't like how it was so abrupt because before you were following along there was a barbarian guy that you were kind of like following along and his sections were a little confusing because they were actually written to like I don't even know how to describe it they were written like in the dialect so you have to like sound out what they're saying but you can actually it's kind of neat because you can actually like hear the accent while you're reading it because you're reading the words like they would be said not how they're actually spelled if that makes any sense um, Thankfully, like, those sections weren't, like, too long because it gives me a headache after a while because it's, like, trying to figure out what he's saying. And sometimes I found that I had to actually say it out loud. Um, in movies, like, when it's like that, I can understand because I'm hearing it, not actually just, like, reading it. That's one of the reasons why I think train spot, train, train spotting, I can't say that word, is actually written that way, too. And I couldn't read that book, like, when I tried to read it, like, ten years ago, so... I don't know, maybe I'll give that a try again, but, um, yeah, I gave the, the book, like, three out of five stars. I mean, I really liked the first part of the book. I didn't really like it when it got to the point where you were kind of following along Alex and Andrea. I didn't really particularly like them. Um, and like I said, the barbarian sections were kind of weird. <laughs> but, I mean, sometimes it was hard to tell, like, what was a dream and what wasn't if you're following along with, uh, John Orr. Um, I mean, it all becomes clear at the end, sort of, but I felt like this was a kind of a book that probably would have been better to read, like, in, with, like, other people, like, as you're taking, like, an English course or something, so you can actually study and, like, break down, like, all the imagery and, like, find the hitting things of, like, what, what this means and, like, the parallels between, like, the three storylines, etc. But all in all, it was kind of enjoyable. Um, it was one of the books on my list. I think it's like the best fantasy from between 1946 and 87. So, yeah. Um, I like I really enjoyed like the John storyline more so because like his world, that world was kind of crazy. But then when he like stows away on a train, that kind of lost me because he's just going through like these weird landscapes of like war and like I don't know maybe see that's the thing like this book was written like how long ago was it like 86 or in the 80s or something so like I wasn't that old then and maybe like some of that has to do with what was going on in the world at that time like I have no idea so like I feel like some of that imagery and symbolism and stuff is lost but all in all, like, it is an enjoyable book. Um, it's not one of my favorites, and there's parts of it that I just didn't like. But, I mean, I'm glad I kind of read it. I did stick with it, because I kind of figured out what was going on, like, what the twist was going to be before the end, because it, after you kind of read along with Alex and Andrea's storyline, you kind of figure it out. But, I mean, I don't know. It was it was kind of odd. Um, I did give it three to 
three to five stars, but I think I was kind of debating between two and three, so maybe I, maybe it was more of a 2.5 to three star book. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, if you guys have read this book, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Like, I would really love to hear your thoughts on The Bridge and anything else by I Am Banks because I've read a few reviews on Goodreads that said that they were glad that, like, this wasn't the first book they picked up of his because they really loved his other books but didn't really care for this one so much. Um, so yeah, I would love to hear those thoughts and I would totally love to hear what your take on The Bridge is because, yeah, <laughs> some strange fiction here. And yeah, you can check out my, um, actual review. It's probably in a little more in depth, maybe. Or I probably said some things that I haven't said in the video on my Goodreads, but yeah, so... Thanks guys for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.